Free Jared Monroe, a former Crowder, Loud Earth Crowder staffer, claims he's being legally abused after quitting the toxic and abusive show. And so, oh boy, we got a whole bunch of uh, e-drama going on that I certainly want to chime into. It's not the most pressing of news considering World War III is on the table. A bridge just collapsed. People are still missing, but we can always squeeze in a little bit of the inner workings of the media landscape. Yes, it is all important to talk about. And first of all, rest in peace to anybody who died in the bridge collapse. Also, um, you know, we hope that they find everybody soon and people heal quickly. That was terrible to see that. That was definitely terrible. But the things that are going on should be talked about because uh, we have a serious problem in this country about communicating the truth, okay? And so what he calls e-drama, I think we're going to call it checks and balances because if I stop paying cable, right, like literally was like, you know what, I'm done. I'm not watching. Uh, I was already not watching like local news and stuff because you know, I could get that from an app, right? And so, and I wasn't watching like ABC nightly news and because, you know, they're full of a bunch of propaganda. So I said to myself, if I'm already done like paying cable, I'm not watching that. The last thing I was watching was Fox News when Tucker Carlson was on there. But after they fired him, I was like, well, that's a wrap. Why am I going to come to alternative news and still get the same watered down messaging? We are looking at the eclipsing of the corporate narrative machine, the top-down media empires, into independent meritocratic-based spaces. What we do here matters. So addressing stories like the like this, I think, is very important. Yeah, me too. I think it's important. All right. I know I keep doing that, right? I know I keep doing that. And again, the corporate level stuff. I mean, you know, I have another episode coming out shortly with what's going on with the Daily Wire. It was a there was a huge space yesterday on Twitter. And anyway, we'll talk about it on that episode. But the thing is, uh, the chickens are coming to home. What is it? The rooster's coming home to roost. What is it? That's what it is. In any corporation, we need to have discussions. What's going on? What's being held back? This has a lot to do with Crowder, The Daily Wire, Candace Owens, Jared Monroe, Dave Landau, and oh boy, let's dive right in. Of course, you know, we hosted here Stephen Crowder and Candace Owens around the time this uh, Daily Wire Crowder uh, incident happened. And I try to be, as everyone already knows, a fence sitter on the issue. And I'll tell you why. For one, if I don't know, I don't know. And so I try not to immediately be an arbiter of truth based on my personal emotions of whether I think Crowder is good or bad or. All right. So I remember when this happened. This was back in. Um, the, I, I, what was it? Last, this was last summer. Yep. And there was some beef with Crowder and uh, the Daily Wire. And, and now I did think I was like, Candace is doing too much. Like she was like cursing on Tim Pool's show. And like, I was like, what? And then she wanted to talk to Crowder's ex-wife. I was like, this is a bit much. <laughs> like, like, what is she doing? You know, I mean, I guess we all grow at some point, but uh, it, it was a lot. She went to bat for the Daily Wire. And so that's why it's all intertwined. It really is. Jeremy, boring is good or bad. I can only really just say, like, here are my experiences with these individuals. Here's what I think about them. Here's what I think may be happening. And then I hope you guys draw your conclusions and I hope your conclusions lead to a greater wisdom of the crowd. That is to say, Jared Monroe, a former employee of uh, a lot of Crowder, or I guess they're saying his name is uh, Jamin, uh, Jared Matello, but uh, that's the name he goes by on, um, on social media, is alleging abuse. And there's an NDA and there's things involved. Now we've got a bunch of drama emerging. I don't know exactly what happened. And I don't know why I should immediately assume Steven Crowder is a bad guy. Now, I feel the same way, too, because I don't know exactly what happened. And I'm going to play a little bit of that video that uh, Jared Monroe came out with a 15 minute long video. And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not watching a 15 minute long video because, um, like, what's going on? So we'll listen to Tim kind of break this down a little bit. Let you guys hear a little bit of what Jared uh, was saying. And then we'll look at reactions. But I don't know what's going on or if any of this stuff is true or whatever. My first thought is, plain and simple, I have no idea. But let's talk about the news. A former employee of right-wing media pundit Stephen Crowder. I also think that's kind of pointless media to say right-wing pundit. You can just say pundit. Right. And what is right-wing anymore? What is it? Seriously, what is it? Because sometimes I find myself like sounding more... <laughs> I'll tell you, in the last few months, they would I have people calling me everything. Right wing, left wing. Um, I've been called a lot of things. Okay. 
the truth is indiscriminate to to sides. It is. So the labels sometimes for me, I don't know, but I mean, hey. Accused him of fostering a toxic and abusive work environment and then subjecting him to years of legal abuse after he left the company. In a video made public Tuesday, Jared Mattello, known publicly as Jared Monroe, and on the Louder with Crowder show, he was not gay Jared, claimed he had been tormented by the controversial internet personality for years. He does not name Crowder in the video, but a source told Mediaite he is a subject. I think that's fairly obvious to any human being with rational thought capabilities. Enough is enough. This can't go on any longer, Monroe said. I am currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer. I'm going to pause right there. And um, my first response to this is, I'm sorry, dude. I don't believe any of it. I don't believe any of it, be it from Crowder or Monroe or anybody, because none of this makes functional sense to me. Tim Pool is right. Because if you're being so, okay. <sighs> what he's going to end up saying is that this guy is saying like, oh, they put an NDA on me. I can't talk about certain things. And and we'll, we'll we'll go into the tweets, right? And um, but if you have an NDA, like, how are you even doing this? Like, what are you doing? Because we all know who you're talking about, right? So what are you doing? And furthermore, it's like, then he puts a GoFundMe, and I just think it's just riding off the coattails of what Candace is doing. And then it makes me feel like I don't trust a single thing that I'm seeing anymore, you know. Like, I, and I hate that I get like this, but I'm a very cynical person because we get lied to so much, man. Like, you know, you become like the abusive kid, like, you know, the abuse child where, where it's like, you know, you just don't trust anybody around you. This can't go on any longer. And uh, as the famous saying goes, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So here we go. I'm currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer. This has been going on for a while now, and it simply cannot live in darkness for another day. Uh, but I am asking for your help to fight back. First, some context. Uh, in late October of 2023, to my surprise, I was served these papers, a cease and desist from my former employer. It threatened severe legal action in the form of a lawsuit and demanded I cease communications with my friends. The scare tactics uh, of cease and desist are generally to intimidate, isolate, and eventually devastate. So I don't even understand. Like, like most cease and desist, it also... Wait a minute. To not... He can't talk to his friends? And it's just already starting off really borderline to me. It just is. Like, I, like you're... Being, okay, you're being, you're being broad. And I can already tell, guys, we're going to... We'll suffer through another, like, 45 seconds of this. And that's what this is to me. Yes demanded that I swiftly provide uh, them written certificate of my compliance. I did not. In the same delivery, I was also served these papers, a rule 202 petition from my uh, former employer. You can look that up on the internet. I know I had to. Um, these documents were filed with the county court of my former uh, place of employment, demanding that I be subject to an oral deposition under oath for an unlimited amount of time where they were free to interrogate me on pretty much any private matter that they chose. Also in this petition for discovery, they demanded that I turn over documents uh, of all communications with more than a dozen of my friends and unlimited amount of unnamed persons uh, in any form and over an unlimited period of time. I don't I get it, <laughs> y'all. <sighs> Ah, all right, let's skip ahead a little bit. My predicament, uh, he even agreed to work for half of his normal rate. Even so, the legal fees immediately began to pile up. My former employer and his attorney argued I could not work in media anywhere in the world, and most certainly not in the United States for two years. Um, this is not because I involuntarily signed some sort of non-compete in my original employment agreement. It was because they decided a non-solicitation clause that was in said original agreement would retroactively be interpreted as the broadest and strictest non-compete one could draft. It told me my Twitter account, a, another potential lifeline to future work, 
uh, which I had owned and been the sole manager of since 2009, was to be turned over to them on the argument that it was somehow their intellectual property now. Okay, so I'm going to keep it all the way real. Okay, guys, stick with me. Uh, <laughs> hope y'all made it this far. Okay. What it seems like is, now, again, I want to be clear. I do not know what happened. I don't take sides. I need to hear Crowder's side. I, it doesn't even matter what I think. Okay? What is happening here? If... Uh, all right, like it, what it seems like to me that he's saying that he's not allowed to talk to his friends anymore. So that's weird. Then he's saying, I can't work for two years and like even get on Twitter and you don't know, compete anywhere else. And so if this is something that's true, generally it feels like there's a secret that is being hidden. There's more to the story. Um, I feel like, I would feel like if somebody was doing this to me, I would feel like they didn't want me to spill the tea about something. And that's why they keep trying to shut my mouth. Okay. And they must be afraid that I'm going to come out with something. Now, they used to call the guy not gay Jared. And you can go ahead and, you know, get to the, this, the conclusion that I'm getting to. Because that's what it's feeling like to me. It's really feeling like, you know, like, what, do you, what is it you don't want him to tell? Like, I don't know, y'all. I, I don't know. So um, I, I don't know. And it's allegedly, allegedly, like, my thoughts, it's just a, a thought. You know, I, I don't know anything. But I know what I feel if this was true. And um, Crowder hasn't talked about it. Of course, uh, what's his name? Now, see... Candace, now, she decided to go ahead and uh, get involved with this. I don't know what this is all about. Everything Jared is saying is true. And he is one of the many people that has been enduring this legal abuse for years. Crowder's ex-wife and family and virtually all his firm, former employees, included Dave Landau, should similarly find the courage to speak out. But what is it that this guy is forcing y'all to do? Like, what is it that he's forcing y'all not to talk about? Like, how does this one person have this much power over y'all? So I don't know. I don't know. And I'm still here to because I, there was a tweet with uh, the quartering. Yeah, because, you know, that's his friend. Just remember all the people who ran cover for Crowder while he ruined this and other people's lives. Cough the quartering. And so um, the quartering says, please describe how I ran cover for Crowder by casting doubt that maybe the wife whom he was currently going through divorce proceedings with maybe didn't leave all the context in a video of an argument meant to smear him publicly. But you, but that is your homie, though. So, like, don't do that. Like, that, that is your homie. And, I mean, it's, it's okay, but, you know. So, but Boxing MD, who, by the way, I can't stand on Twitter. <laughs> Okay, I've been saying this for years. Steven Crowder is an obvious situation and takes his insecurities out on his ex-wife, his employees, Dave Landau. And now we are hearing about J Jared Monroe's evil and Im immoral treatment by Crowder. I don't know. And so that's what he said. Okay, so I don't, because I don't want this channel to be sounding all salacious. Like, ooh, yo, guess what? You know, like, I don't want that. So, but... It's just it's, it maybe sometimes the 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 evidence kind of just leads you a certain way. I don't know, but but we don't know if any of this stuff is true, and so we'll wait and see what happens because there's something that is going to happen. That's the thing. Something is going to come out of this uh, because because this is just too much for it not to not to happen because this is what's been going on all week with media, with personalities, with everything. Something's going. Something else. Is going to come out of it, and uh, well, we'll just wait and see because I will report on the update. There will be an update.